Jeremiah chapter 10. Chapter that we're going to have some fun in. Chapter not for the weak hearted. So for you worldly Christians out there who have just come upon this man, I'll give you a few minutes to turn and get to another station. Where we get into the Bible and study the meat of the Bible. I'll give you a few minutes. You know. I love to tell the story. Alright, you guys gone? Hear ye the word. King James 1611 Bible. That's the word. Which the Lord speaketh unto you. O house of Israel. It's written to the house of Israel, but we're going to learn something out of this chapter. There's things found in the Old Testament you can't find in the New Testament, but God tells you his attitude. We don't learn about witches in the New Testament, but when you read the Old Testament, find out that God says you're to take a witch to burn her. Now, we're not to burn the witch today, but doesn't that tell you what God thinks? You can't find anywhere in the New Testament says not to burn your children. But yet you read the Old Testament, so since you don't find the New Testament, it's okay to go ahead and kill your children. So we run to the Old Testament, we study the Old Testament, we see what God likes what God approves, and we see what God calls an abomination. Now, we can see sodomites in the Old Testament, and we can see the ruling in the New Testament. We can find nine of the Ten Commandments in the New Testament, and realize, well, one of them is not for the church. But well, that's another study. So, what we're reading is to Israel. Now, Israel are... The people of God. I am not calling myself a Jew, but we are the children of God by the Lord Jesus Christ. So what God tells Israel to do and what not to do is pretty much example what God should tell us to do. Salvation is wrought by the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Jews died, they went to Abraham's bosom. They couldn't go to glory because Christ has not shed his blood yet. For thus saith the Lord, learn, we're probably not going to finish this chapter. Maybe, maybe not. Learn not the way of the heathen. Now the heathen are not Israel. They're the Gentiles. There are two people in the Old Testament. The children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And then there are Gentiles. So if you come from Abraham, Ishmael, you are a heathen. Because the children of Israel does not work with Ishmael. Because Israel comes from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who is later renamed to, guess what? The house of Israel. The children of Israel, of Jacob. Ishmael never had a child named Israel. I think the Bible would, you know, hear ye the word, it said. So the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. That's an interesting phrase. Get that. The way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Now Jews seek a sign. Here God is telling them, don't look at those signs. Haley's Comet's coming. I guess it's going to be the end of the world. There are stars falling from the heavens. Oh, man. 
Libra is going to show up with Virgo, and, and Leo the Lion is going to get killed by Orion when he takes off his belt, and blah, 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 blah. You know what the Bible says about the signs of the heaven? Who cares? And when you do are dismayed the signs of heaven, that's not for the Christian, because all that stuff you read about prophecy, the tribulation, the Christian is gone from all that. I don't have to worry about the third of the stars falling. I'm on the other side of the stars. And when those third of the stars fall, I will see Satan be cast out of heaven. Don't be dismayed at the signs, uh, you know, of the newspaper. Or the Lord's coming sooner or later. And you think that the newspaper and the media is going to tell you when he's coming by all the news in the world? Father, yes, son. I got to really get down and get my bride. Why? The Daily News says. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. For the heathen are dismayed. That's discouraged. Loss of courage, depression, yield to fear. If you get dismayed, you're not on the side of the Lord. You are on the side of the heathen. That's what it says. <gasps> Jesus is coming. There's an earthquake in some dark place in Africa. Oh. Jesus will come when God is sooner or later ready for him to come. Whether I die or I'm living, Jesus will come. I am to occupy myself with the gospel to the lost people and training Christians to do right. I'm not to worry about everything that's going around me. Now, if in my front yard in Florida a sinkhole starts opening up, okay, now I need to start worrying about getting new property. But other than that, I don't need to worry. If they say a hurricane's going to come, okay, I need to start boring up windows, start doing stuff like that. Then I need to, you know, do some things. But other than that, keep serving the Lord and keep going. All right? Stop panicking. For the customs of the people are vain. Did you get the way of the heathen? Be not dismayed. The customs of the people are vain. Nothing. Did you get that? Because I'm going to kick an idol. And if you do know and studied your Bible, you know exactly where I'm going. And some of you probably out there just laughing. Go ahead and say it. Go. I know he's going to say it. I know that guy is going to do it. And some of you who don't know your Bible are going to be in a quite a bit shock, and I'll let you call 911 right now and get the paramedics with the paddles ready and get your pills so you can take your pills before it happens. I'll give you a few minutes. Okay, did you get everything ready? Vain means nothing. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Hmm, nothing wrong with that. I've cut trees out of the forest and chopped them up, and my dad sold them for firewood, and we used it for firewood. Specific woods, they have some great smell, and they make them feel nice and warm. The work of the hands of a workman with an axe. Hey, that's your lumberjack right there. Lumberjack, nothing wrong. Period. All right, close your eyes. We're done. We're not. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought we were done. You sure you want me to go further? Yeah, go for it. Tell them. Okay. All right, so we have the way of the heathen. Don't be dismayed. The customs of the people, and they're vain, and we have a tree. They deck it with silver and with gold. What? I'll give you a few minutes as we get an introduction by Bert I. You give you a few minutes because I may have to wait to add well, this to the message. Of our friend Cornelius? But See, Bert Eyes will tell you about the Bible. Probably doesn't know anything about the Bible. 
And while we prepare that for the message, let's look at the evergreen I'll leave these references for yourself, for the Bible student, for the Bible listener, to study to show thyself a fool on the God of us that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth, Deuteronomy 12, 2, 1 Kings 14, 23, about the ever green tree. You read it, King James Bible, 2 Kings 16, verse 4. Second Kings 17 verse 10. Second Chronicles 28 verse 4. Isaiah 57 verse 5. Jeremiah 2 verse 20. Jeremiah 3 verse 6 and 16 verse 30 goes to Jeremiah. Ezekiel chapter 6 verse 13. Ezekiel 17 verse 24 and Luke 23 verse 31 about the ever green tree and I I wonder how you really check that out they deck it with silver and gold it's funny how silver and gold because if you were to put a monetary value on that, it would be gold, then silver. And then what little thing I'm going to play for you by Mr. Ives, it, he goes right by the King James 1611 Bible. You can't escape the Bible. Satan knows his Bible. Tell me, you like, you know, you'll know, you'll hear. I'll find a spot. I mean, I think you just wait, record it down real quick. Let me around there. I got a little interesting thing to add to it. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. Wow. This is the tree that came out of the forest. Isaiah 41 verse 7. Anybody recognize that thing? Oh, Tannenbaum, oh, Tannenbaum. If you know your language, it's a Christmas tree. How it's found in Baptist churches. They're upright as a palm tree. Palm trees are very high trees. 1 Corinthians 8, 4. But speak not. When I was a little boy, we had a mall that we go to, and they had all kinds of animation figures around Christmas stuff. And they even had a talking Christmas tree. But it didn't talk. It was robotics and tape recorders and stuff like that. They must needs be born. You have to carry it. It ain't going to walk in the house all by itself. Because they cannot go. You know, I forget where, I think, is it Solomon that says, you know, if a tree falls on the north, there is where it lies. It ain't going to go nowhere. Be not afraid of them. There are heathen and religions, especially the Druids. Oh, if you didn't do a certain tree act, if a tree didn't act a certain way, Ooh, we're going to have, you know, someone's going to die in a house. If you didn't burn that Yule log. Oh, oh, I didn't say log, did I? I'm sorry. As far as the Christian, as far as the, the, the nation of Israel, don't worry about those stupid vain things. But don't do them. Learn not the way of the heathen. What's wrong with the tree? Learn not the way of the heathen. What is the way of the heathen? They deck it with silver and gold. Oh. Well, we do it, you know, it's, and God says it's vain. It's a custom, and it's vain. Ain't going to get you no rewards in heaven. You may even lose some rewards. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. The tree cannot do evil. Neither also is in it that it ain't that. Yeah. Also is it in them to do good. 
It may look pretty, but it has no value. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Look at that. Liking God to this worthless tree that is put up by man and decorated, and compared to that tree, there is none like thee, God. Do you know what that tree is for the heathen? It is a God. The ever green tree that you cut down and kill and you keep it alive after a certain time. And when it's all through, you get yourself a new log and fool your family and put that up on fire in the fire pool. You need to study. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? Many people don't fear him. For to thee does it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and all their kingdoms, there is none like thee. All the rulers and all the people of the world, there is no one like God. But they are altogether brutish. And isn't it funny how Christians want a Christian in the White House as the President of the United States, but they're not calling upon God to let Jesus Christ come and get us? The answer is not putting a Christian in the White House, is God calling Jesus to call us. That should be the prayer. I would love to have God rapture every Christian out the day before election day. No, no, Lord, I gotta vote for the Republican. <laughs> You're coming home. No, no, I gotta vote. I have to vote. One more day, Lord, let me cast my vote, then call us home. And all those that don't go to the election, they'll be left behind. They don't vote. It's almost bad to realize every every Christian that is when they are raptured heaven realize that their guns are going to be left behind. Oh God, take that! Oh, how dare you leave my gun behind? I'm sorry, I'm having fun. I love the word, but they are altogether brutish, stupid, savage, gross, carnal. I love them definitions. Missions in 1828 dictionary. And foolish. You're stupid, you're savage, you're gross, you're carnal, and you're foolish. Don't you just love God? The stock. What is that? That is the tree. Is a stock. The stock. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Nothing. All, you know, you ever read the book of Ecclesiastes about vanities? All is vanities. The world is all vanities. Silver spread into plates. We're going to talk about another God here. Brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphaz. Oh, there's the silver and gold again. They must have took it off the tree. The work of the workmen and of the hands of the founder. Blue and purple is their clothing. Royalty richly. Those were very high-priced dyes. They are all the work of cunning men. We talked about that last night. Cunning means skillful. But the Lord is the true God. You know, the silver and gold, they make all these things. You've got people in high class and high riches clothing, but the Lord is the true God. Get your eyes off the gold. Get your eyes off the silver. Get your eyes off people. Get your eyes on the Lord. He is a living God. You know, man will soon die. But God lives. An everlasting king. 
Imagine America being a Christian nation and saying, well, I don't know what, I don't remember the years, but saying at one time, we'll have no king. God is king. Well, I mean, we, uh, we don't want no English king. Hmm. So you model all the all the buildings of the country in Washington D.C. after Roman buildings, mm -hmm. and you put the eagle as the nation symbol. And have you read about the eagle in the Roman and Greek gods? And as far as justice, you put a woman with scales and with a sword and a blindfold. And you do know that that is a Roman goddess. And you put this big structure of Washington Monument, a structure that you find in Italy of Rome in front of the Pope's palace. And you say we will have no king. Well, a nation of Israel said one time, we'll have no king but Caesar. Hmm. I think America said that too. Because if we were to take God as king, we would allow his word in the courthouses. We would allow his word in the schools. We will allow you to pray before each class. Funny how we still say pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth, but we can't pray to God. And yet, we call ourselves a Christian nation. And we refuse kingship of God. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. Earthquake. The wrath of God will be Babylon coming. The wrath of God will be Titus coming. The wrath of God will be Jesus Christ coming. And the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. That is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Babylon survives after it takes over Israel. Not long, but it survives. Rome, still kind of a laid back thing right now, but still there. You wait till the Lord Jesus Christ come. Thus shall ye say unto them, Jeremiah, tell them. The gods, small g-o-d-s, that have not made the heavens. Oh, you got to have a God that made the heavens. And the earth. Oh, he's got to make the earth. So I guess when you worship the Big Bang that made the heaven and earth, I guess that's your God. By your mouth. You proclaim that the Big Bang made the heavens and earth. That is your God, according to the Bible. And yet, God says that did not make the heaven and the earth. So you think you have a God, which God says is not a God. Even they shall perish from the earth. And from under these heavens. Plural. And the subject is the gods. You go down to the library or go online or find a book on, on, on any rectable uh, place where you can buy a book. You find books or books that will give you every name of gods from A to Z. might be one book, it might be several books, but you were to find a book 
and make a list from A to Z, even numbers, if, if God has a number in his, in, as the beginning of his name. All except God of the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only begotten Son of God and the Holy Spirit that is of God and of Jesus Christ. All the others will be wiped away, gone. Zeus, Apollo, Orion, I just can keep on going. They'll all be gone. You will never hear these gods in New Jerusalem. He has made the earth by his power. It said in Genesis 1, all he did was speak. The voice of God is power. Go ahead. Walk in a dark room and say, let there be light and see what happens. He has established the world by his wisdom. Using God's knowledge, wisdom, he made the world. I'm going to make water. In order so the earth will not be completely flooded, i got to make a substance that is more stronger than the water. So it, I'll call it land, Genesis 1. And I'll make it so strong that unless I interfere, that water will not cross that land. Unless I interfere. And has stretched out the heavens... By his discretion. Where God laid the stars, the planets, the suns, and everything there, God said, yep, that's where I want it. And the Bible even says in the book of Psalms that he knows the names of all those stars. We can't even count them. We haven't even seen them all. And God placed each one and gave them a name. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. Did you get that? Run that back to Genesis 1. Run that back to Leviathan who goes swimming around, not the Atlantic. Oh, no, 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 no. Christopher Columbus, you didn't prove the Bible wrong when you didn't see the, the dragon in the water. You were not in the right water. There's a dragon. And he's swimming around. He is boldly gone where astronauts in space ships that need an oxygen device to breathe. In the heavens. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. I don't understand that. He maketh lightnings with rain. Well, see, you know, the, the, the cold and the hot air and air, blah, 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 Now, just say, just teach the kids. Children, today we're going to learn weather. All right. Okay. First thing we're going to learn, we're going to learn about lightning. All right. How's lightning? I'll tell you. God makes the lightning. That's it. That's it. Well, you can't charge $4,000 for a class in a college to teach God made the lightning. you got to make out string words that no one knows and no one can say. So you can charge an outrageous fortune to, to be a weatherman. So we can lie and tell you it's El Nemo and global warming instead of God. Can't mention his name. He maketh lightnings with rain. He bringeth forth the wind out of his... Ooh, even the wind comes from God. Go up to a scientist. Go up to a weather forecaster. Go up to somebody who studies weather and have them describe to you and all about wind. And try to predict the wind. Where does wind come from? I know the answer. You do? You have a PhD? No. 
I have a KJV. And it says it comes from God. End of discussion. I win. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. I just I just talked to you about the brutish of knowledge of education to make the full person not understand what we know. I know. I got a Bible. I'll give God all the credit. Thank you very much. Every founder, that's somebody who made something, or a founder of a college. Oh, I founded this university for the search of going against God in his Bible. It is confounded, put to shame, in silence. These PhD and doctors and BHD and whatever you, all these people of knowledge once they stand before God and God will say, what did you teach them? Oh, Dalton Reverdy of the waves and the, and the electrical forces and electrical. Shut up. Gabriel, bring the Bible over here. Yes. Open up to Jeremiah chapter 10. All right, Lord, open. And it says, He maketh like these with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasure. And that professor with his PhD with who? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, into the everlasting judgment that is fire you condemn. Having fun. Founded by the graven image. That, that's against God. For his for his molten image is falsehood. Uh -oh. That's a lie. Molten images are lies. You know anybody who believes that? Anybody who has a molten image, show them in the Bible. It's a falsehood. But make them say they're a Christian first. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I, I like that. I, I like that item you have around your neck there. What is it? Oh, it's a cross, a crucifix. Really? And it's metal. Yeah. So you, it's probably made. It's been put into a mold, right? Yeah, something like that, I guess. All right. And uh, Jeremiah ten fourteen says that what you're wearing is a lie. That's what God said. And there is no breath in it. So when you wear Jesus around your neck, and I can say this not reverently because it's not Jesus, because the Bible says there are another Jesus, the Jesus you carry around your neck that's molten is alive, and he is dead. My Jesus is alive and well and seated with the right hand of the Father right now, saying, I'm praying for that guy. He sticks his neck out for the word and for us. I'm praying for him. I know that's so. Because you think if America had its ways today, you think they would continue to allow me to preach on the streets like I do? You see somebody walking down the street who proclaims to be a Christian have a dead Jesus around their neck. Read them that verse. Take it from him. Hey, I want to hear Jesus breathe. He's not breathing. Get the paddles! 911, what's your memory? This guy's image is not breathing. Get the paddles! They'll lock you up. And he'll take him, put it back his neck, and walk away. <laughs> If there's no breath in them, there's no life. How many religion people are in a grave dead with no life, and yet they're honored as somebody dead? How do you know Jesus is alive? He walked into a room with 11 of his men and told one of them, well, 12, his, Thomas was there, he Put your hands in my wounds. Go ahead. I heard what you said when I wasn't, when you weren't here. I heard what you told him when I wasn't around. I still can perceive your thoughts. 400 people saw the resurrected Christ eating, drinking, walking, breathing. You want to walk in a Catholic church and see their images and their icons? They don't breathe. 
They are vanity. Got that? Just as much as that tree in the beginning of this chapter. And they say a tree breathes. A tree will take the carbon dioxide, I believe, is in the air, and it'll turn it into clean air that we can breathe. That's, see, I, I gave you very simple. Now, if a scientist told you where to get up and tell you what a tree does with our, and he'd give you some kind of long words and some kind of. A tree takes the bad air and gives us. Plants will take the bad air and give us good air. How do you like that? And that was free. But when you cut the tree down and you make it a god, it has no more breath. So it's vanity. And the work of errors. Ooh, boy. That's, isn't God going to have fun at the judgment? When he calls all the people that made the idols and all the people that made the images and all the people that worshipped them, vanity and error. Oh, Lord, how dare you talk about that? Give me the bees. Give me some juju bees. In the time of their visitation. Oh, wow. There's that visitation again. They shall perish. And that's the people. Every man, verse 14, is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder, that's a person. It doesn't look like people that make these images and, and items of that. It don't look like they go to heaven. Because anybody who believes the God of the Bible would get away from that mess. That's just as almost bad as a Jehovah Witness saying, oh yeah, well, we're right in Jehovah's eyes, but we, his son is not God. You can't be saved and say Jesus Christ is not God. It looks like you can't be saved and make these idols and images. The portion of Jacob is not like them. We've been reading about the Gentiles. Learn not the way of the heathen, verse 2. Verse 3, all the way down to 15, are the ways of the heathen. Now we're back to Jacob. Verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. The portion of Jacob. That's the same guy. Is not like them. Who? Verses 2 to 15. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Now they are in vast concurrence with these heathen practices, which they ought not to be. And what God is telling them, what you're doing is a heathen thing. That ought not to be you. You are a particular people. And right now you're not being particular. You're acting just like those other people. Gather up thy wares out of the land. O inhabitant of the forest. Fortress. Gather up thy wares out of the land. O inhabitant of the fortress. For thus saith the Lord. Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this once. Babylon's coming. Titus is coming. The Antichrist is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. I should have said Babylon came and Titus came. They're not coming, they already came. But the Antichrist is coming and Jesus Christ is coming. And he's going to clean house.
You know what the Antichrist does in the temple in Jerusalem? He does something that's an abomination to the Jewish. He sets up an image like Nebuchadnezzar and tells you when you start hearing the party music, dance down, fall down, and do the boogie woogie. And then when the music when the music stops, find yourself a seat and listen to the preacher. And will distress them that they may find it so. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous, but I said, truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled. Someone's come in and taken. And all my cords, that's ropes, of the tent that you live in, are broken. So his house, his tent, it's all over the place. Think about having a tent full of sandwiches and food and a couple bears coming in and just having a row. I mean, then you come back. You, it, that's what it'd be like. Things is everywhere. I said, truly, this is my grief. I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled and my... All my cords, all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth from me. They're, they're gone. Your family. And they are not. They're dead. That's exactly what they said about Joseph. Now, what they said about Joseph was they didn't know what he was. So they last sold him to the Ishmaelites. They had no idea if he was dead or not. This guy does not know if they're dead. But presumably, dead that's what they kept saying about Joseph and he was not not what well we really don't know but you told your father that you know he was eaten by wild animals why didn't you say he was dead you really didn't know you knew it was a lie scripture was scripture there is none to stretch forth my tent anymore must be an awful big tent. He can't do it himself. He needs two people. Did we read in Isaiah about the, the cords and stretching out and get more rope, make the tent bigger because you're going to have a big family? We read that as a family tonight in our, our Bible reading. Here, the tent is destroyed. In Isaiah, it's read about get ready, you barren women, because I'm going to give you children. I'm going to have you stretch out the tent. Here, it's destroyed. There is none to stretch forth my tent. Now run that tent to the tabernacle. The tabernacle is a tent. The tent is a tabernacle. Anymore. And set up my curtains. The curtains were like gates, doors, hiding. Kept the parents from the children. And kept the daughters from the, from the brothers. And the brothers from and maybe some, even some animals. For the pastors are become brutish. The pastors have become stupid. Savage, gross, carnal. Hey, <laughs> that's today. And have not sought the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. we got to get another Bible for this one. You want to catch a preacher? I've never done this, but go by. You, if, you know, if you're, you're carrying game for a new church, the very first question ask your preach the preacher of that church do you so do you seek the Lord do you sought the Lord I wonder what you want to be prepared for that answer unless he does go around calling up pastors in your home town do you seek the Lord what kind of answers will you get immediate without a thought? Because a man that seeks it, yeah, I do. I pray to the Lord all the time. There are several people in my congregation. I just got, you know, they just need prayer. But here, there are pastors are become brutish. And they call themselves pastors. I didn't say it. I didn't give them the title. And have not sought the Lord. 
Therefore they shall not prosper. And all their flocks <laughs> shall be scattered. Behold the noise of the brute. That's a report, a rumor, a fame. Is come. And great commotion out of the north country, Babylon. To make the cities of Judah desolate. And a den of dragons. O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. O oh Lord, correct me. Now this is one, this is like, I think this is the second or third memory verse that I ever learned. The first one's Nehemiah, where he held the sword by his side. And I was, in the, the one that I can't remember, but I lost the beginning uh, memory verses. But this is one of them. I memorized and forgot O Lord correct me but with judgment not in thy anger so not all judgment of God is anger listen just because your father takes you and and however he disciplines you doesn't mean it has to be in anger Especially if he allows hours, if not days, to calm down. And he takes you off to the side, and you know you're going to get something, or whatever the thing is. And when he explains to you what your charge is and what needs to be done, that's not in anger. That is love. And you can never say God judges in anger because he sends prophets. He sends his Bible. He sends men to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ comes back in second advent of wrath and anger, but yet they know they have it coming to them. least thou bring me to nothing. That's a prayer of Jeremiah. Correcting your children in anger brings nothing. Now, I can't think of what the word Paul uses over there when he says, Fathers, um, provoke not your children. And it's... Uh, Something he says, I don't remember. But this is what he's talking about here. And the proper way to correct your child is give it an hour. Give it a day. Relax. Think about. Talk to the child before the correction. Before. Listen, you don't send... A person to jail without sending him to the judge first and the judge will lay out the charges this is what you've done this is what you've done this is what you've done and the mode of the penalty of the law says whether money whatever the mode of the crime says 10 years in jail minimum all right, this is your crime. I'm going to send you to jail for 10 years because of what you've done. And then the application of judgment is passed. You never send somebody to jail rightfully. I mean, I, there, it's, I'm saying rightfully, you don't send somebody to jail or you don't come and say, hey, give me $500. Give it to me. And three weeks down the road, you go, well, you know, that $500 was because, you know, you killed my dog or something like that. No, you say, listen, this is my dog. You you ran him over with a car. This is how much I cost, how much he, I bought him for. This is how much the vet bills cost to try to keep him alive. It didn't happen. And this is how much it will cost for me to get another dog. Oh, okay, I see. I'm so sorry to have, here's the money, um. And you, well, I'm not going to read They lay out the judgment, Father. Talk. 
You tell what the judgment is. You tell them what's going to happen. And when you do that, it will bring something. But if that child does something right there, don't correct your child in the grocery store or the, the toy store. Get them home. Calm down. I know a family one time, it's so funny, the kids act up in the store, they leave the carriage right there in the store, bring the kid all the way home, discipline him like they're supposed to, go all the way back to the grocery store, and the carriage was there, grab the carriage, go continue shopping. That's proper. Pour out thy fury. And you got to be even careful, with, you know, if you just take them out to the parking lot. There are grocery stores that have video monitoring in the parking lots. Let it be done in your home. Let it be done with patience. Give it a little time and explain the action. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not. And upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob. That's a particular kind of statement there. The Antichrist is going to be drinking their blood for the mass. They're eating up Jacob. That means... They've taken Jacob and they just swallowed him. There's no more Jacob, very little. What left of Jacob is a reference here to, you know, just scraps found on a plate and you, know, you just throw it in the garbage disposal. And devoured him. And consumed him. This is what Babylon's going to do. And has made his habitation desolate. Chapter 51, verse 34, and Isaiah 6, 11 to 13. You see, Israel got involved with the sins of the heathen. You see the fruits. Desolation, destruction. So you think because you're a born-again, Bible-believing Christian that you can go do what the world does, what Satan does, what those who do not believe in God, you think you can do what they do and you'll get away with it. You are a fool. And if God allows you to get away with it, he will have to apologize to every unsaved person at the great white throne judgment by allowing you to get away with what they didn't get away with. And he will have to allow them into glory outside the blood of Jesus Christ. And that can't be so. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Yeah, God loved the world. But many go the broad way. Few enter the straight gate. The fewest even do what the Bible tells them to do. And there are some of the few that think they can go, the, they're going through the right gate, but they can walk the broad way and just get away with it. No. The Bible says, doesn't the judgment of God begin at, at home? Doesn't it begin with his people? Doesn't it begin with those that are in God's family? What is the danger of having a, a tree decorated in your house? Read what he says to Jacob, verses 16. All the way to the end of the chapter. Because that's exactly what they were doing. And if God allows you as a Christian to get away with what Israel was doing. And had their city destroyed by Babylon. 
he would have to apologize to the people of Israel today saying, excuse me for doing that because you had a tree because I had to allow this Christian to do it. There is chastisement, there is punishment, there is destruction, there is death because of sin. And you're not going to get away with it. You can come up with any excuse you want to, you can come up with any hallway pass, but it's not signed by God. When I was in school, we had, we had passes that you had to have. When the teacher saw you, you better have a pass and it better be going where it said you were going. It would say bathroom meant you were going to the bathroom. If it, if it said library, it meant you were going to go to the library. You were not hanging out at the gymnasium. Unless you had a gymnasium pass. And there were, when I got to junior high, there were people making false passes. And believe me, when you got caught with one of those false passes, you were in deep trouble. You had to stay at the school, and you had to have your parents sing. They probably don't do that today, but you were in trouble. Just as much as not having a pass. You can't get away. You got to realize God is the rightful judge. And the Bible says you are to judge yourself. Repentant means. Forsaking your sins. A contrite heart, a broken spirit over your sin. And not, oh, let's do every year, we just do it to do it. Some of those sins may be causing somebody you know not to be saved because, because you're no different. We're not going to get it. I mean, some of your health, some of the things that are going on in your life may be because of a particular sin that you're doing. That's a no study in itself. But as far as the Christians doing right, Christmas trees, all that, and the Bible says, don't worry about it. You're not doing it, don't worry about it. Don't go in their houses, go burn them down, stuff like that. Just tell them what the Bible says about it, and that's up. That's like the gospel. You show them what the Bible says, and that's up to them to do what they do. You've done what you have. You tell them where they're wrong, and then the next thing God has you to do. That's what the Bible's all about.